back to the Plant Power Podcast. I hope you've been loving the interviews that I've been doing lately. I've been having just the time of my life connecting with some lovely souls. So I wanted to be back in your ears today with a solo episode. I've just been so amped up for life and having all these big realizations in honestly about six months worth of positive things and things going right and happiness within three weeks. <laughs> so I'm just beaming with happiness right now after coming out of probably the toughest period of my life. And there's a few things that I wanted to share with you about how to bring your dreams into fruition, transform your reality and get into the energy of attraction. Before we get into it, don't forget you can download my free pantry essentials guide with all my favorite foods to keep in my home and my fridge and pantry to fuel my body right as a nutritionist. So you can download that for free in the description below. Uh, I've had lots of positive feedback on it already, so don't forget to grab your copy as well. And also don't forget to subscribe if you like to hear about all things health, wellness. I have been doing a big focus on lots of mental and spiritual stuff recently, even though it's a plant-based podcast. But I've really been stepping out of the plant-based and nutrition realm, I guess, and just looking at all these wider topics, honestly, because I'm just, that's just what I'm going through at the moment and I'm finding it really interesting. So health is an all-encompassing thing. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more and stay up to date. Number one is start striving for what you want instead of running away from what you don't want. This is really hard to tap into this other part of your brain because I've just finished up with 12 weeks with a woman's confidence coach and I'll talk a little bit about that more later because it's honestly transformed everything but to have someone evaluate everything from the outside perspective because we we're so stuck in our daily routines and our own thought patterns and why is this happening to me blah, blah, blah. I was just wishing for a smooth week for months and months. I just wanted a smooth week and I finally have had three of the best weeks of the year. I just can't believe it. But what I noticed I was doing was when I look at, I don't know, like falling into a pattern of something I don't want. Like, oh, I really want financial abundance so I don't feel stuck and I don't have to worry about bills and uh, so that I don't have to work these jobs that I don't like, blah, blah, blah. But because I'm focusing on stuck on paying bills, working jobs I don't like, um, stressing about things, um, having problems, like I'm running away from that. So I'm making that my reality. Oh, how hard? <laughs> how do you stop your subconscious mind doing that? So whatever that means to you, like if it means something got to do with your weight, like, oh, I don't want to be overweight. I hate what I see in the mirror, blah, blah, blah. You're making that reality because those are the actual words that you're choosing. So that is a big um, mind fuck. I'll just say that. Because <laughs> you really have to be so self-aware that you change the actual language that you're using. So instead of saying all these things, I want to be into in the best shape of my life or I'm getting closer to my goals every day or I'm on the way to achieving such and such. Um, so just really changing the language around what you're striving towards, not what you're running away from because it's going to make that happen. And I think same with relationships as well. If you're like, I don't want men who are like blah, 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 then you're making that happen because that's the words you're using. So switch it to what you want, not what you don't want. Number two, work on your self-worth because everything stems from your inner confidence. I went to a mini bush store from the weekend and I drove two and a half hours just to go to someone's birthday that I didn't know to sit around a campfire, listen to some cool music and just meet people who are like me, who have the same interest in music and kind of like a hippie vibe, I guess. Um, people who... Yeah, I don't know. It was just beautiful. It was so perfect. But I went there and this guy was telling me about his relationship problems. And it was actually similar to a lot of the stuff that I went through. Um, but I was saying to him how I just finished up. It's my last week now with a woman's confidence coach. So instead of going to a counselor or a therapist, because a lot of people have issues with that 
And that guy actually said his partner got misdiagnosed with multiple personality disorder by going to a not good counsellor. So I actually didn't know things could get that bad because I really, really like counselling and therapy. But my views on the woman's confidence coach is that everything stems from your confidence. So if something external happens in your life, you will interpret the situation based on how you're feeling and you'll let it affect you based on how you're feeling. Like whether it turns up into this big thing and you make up all these stories like, oh my God, all these people hate me and they're doing this behind my back and they're trying to hurt me, blah, 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 because of all these deep rooted issues. But if you're confident in yourself, you'll be like, oh, that's okay. Maybe you might ask them, oh, what did you mean by that? That's what I've learned like what me and my household have learned to do at the current time instead of assuming the worst we're like oh could you just elaborate on that what did you mean and come from a place of your heart just to get on the same page and understand each other so that all comes from your inner confidence another thing you can do to improve your self-worth is to start taking care of yourself and I'm not really one to spend money on non-essential items like food's my first priority gas Um, sometimes I buy something nice for myself but honestly not often and I guess my best friend has taught me like showed me this whenever we hang out she always book us in for a massage together and stuff and I I always feel guilty because it's like oh I can't be getting a massage because I need to pay be paying for this other stuff but when you do that you're um, raising your view on yourself because you're really special you deserve to get this massage you deserve to take some time out you deserve to spend a little money a little bit of money on self-care and what I've been learning lately is when you do that you can actually earn more money in your life so I have constant problems with my neck every day I'm always in pain so I used to only go to the chiropractor once every three weeks and I just never helped. So now I'm on a weekly thing. I drive almost an hour to go to the specific one because they're just so holistic and they give you a little tea when you get there. You get to sit in the massage chair while you wait for your appointment. And they, he finally found the root cause of the problem after all these years of me having chronic pain when I'm 25, young, fit and healthy. He's like... Why are you in chronic pain if you're in that kind of shape kind of thing? So he found the answer. I started going back to dry needling. And when you have a clear head and like especially getting those kind of treatments, it helps detox your body. It can help with fatigue and everything. It can give you a little bit more energy, help relieve brain fog, give you more clear focus. So what's that going to do in return? That's going to allow me to put more time and energy into my business, concentrate more. It can improve your mood by getting those kind of treatments. So you're just lifting up your whole vibration, even though it's expensive to spend money on that every week. But now I've got the energy and focus to put into my business and the stuff that's important to me. Or even if you're at a job, you can do better at your job because you can focus for longer. Just yeah (laughs) and I've also just been really realizing lately which is what my coach taught me is that you are your business so if your life isn't in order if your home life and environment isn't good if your diet and nutrition isn't good if you've got all this emotional baggage going on that's just really going to affect how you're putting yourself out to the world how you're like the quality of the coaching you're giving to your clients everything like that your daily mood so when you take care of yourself first, that's when you can give your energy and effort into other people to improve their lives as well. The third part to this self-worth question is just knowing that you deserve to be there wherever you want to be. So I another thing I want to pursue is DJing. So I've played a few times in Mackay and my ex-partner was in the industry. He's a very social one. He's got all the connections. So it definitely helped with getting booked for the gigs and not everyone obviously has a kind of leg up like that. So I'm very, very grateful for that. But kind of like we'd go, we'd travel there together because it was like a four hour drive. We'd play on the same night. Uh, So it was really, really helpful. And I'm honestly... (laughs) most people don't believe it but I'm actually really shy and introvert so to put myself out there and like talk to strangers and try to get booked that is just the most terrifying thing to me so I'm really trying to work on just being (laughs) being more social and making new connections in that way as well so 
my next goal, oh my god, I'm getting emotional. My next goal was to get booked for a DJ gig on my own now that I'm single. So I have no one else to help me make it happen on my own. And when I went to that birthday the other day, I didn't know any of the people there except for one friend that invited me. And it was two and a half hours drive. I was eating my dinner and my friend was like, hey, do you want to come to this thing? And I'm like, oh, it's two and a half hours away, better not. And I just thought, what am I going to do? Lay in bed. I don't have any plans for tonight. I was just going to be serious and get up early to work on my business the next day. But it's like, what else am I going to do? Go. Go practice in front of people. Get on the DJ decks and just go get experience doing it in front of people. So because I put out that energy into the world and I've been practicing more and this is kind of the energy of attraction part. I'm like, well, okay, what can I do to get booked? I can message someone who can make me a visual pack so that when I get booked, it will be ready for that. And then I can practice. I can re all my tracks. I can work on my playlist, all the, those kind of things. So you're putting your energy into it. So since I went two and a half hours to this party in hopes to DJ in front of people just for a bit of practice, I got there and I was like, oh yeah, there are DJ decks here. And she's like, oh no, we've just got the speakers, but there's this big bush stuff coming up and there's been some pullouts and she just straight away asked the organizer if I could have a set. <laughs> and I didn't know what to say and like nearly crying because that's my dream is to always has always been to DJ at a bush off. So because that's the energy I'm putting into the world and all these little areas, then that's what's been attracted into my life. So just working towards the little things all the time. But back to what I was saying before, it's like I I've been viewing people as higher up than me, which isn't good, like putting them on a pedestal. So I was too scared to talk to the guy. <laughs> who runs the bush stuff because he runs bush stuff so I'm like what do I even say to him I was freaking out internally <laughs> and it reminds me of when I did my WBFF show and I showed up on the registration night and I saw some of my idols there the most jacked ripped beautiful woman and I got to have a photo with one of them and I was so starstruck that I couldn't get words out of my voice and I was just standing there taking photos so overwhelmed I could barely breathe like holy shit I'm literally touching her right now <laughs> it would just be better if I just treated these people like humans and was like yeah how's your night <laughs> Because I'm so scared that they're so successful, uh, I just absolutely clam up and then I worry, oh my god, they must think I'm weird because I don't know what to talk about and I'm quiet and then I apologize for being shy and stuff. So I don't know if anyone else <laughs> experiences this. I think it's just me because I'm just so nervous in groups of people and especially people that I look up to and stuff. But stop putting people on a pedestal and then just treat them as normal people because they just want to have a conversation and stuff as well. So that's just something that I'm working on at the moment. So I thought I would share that aspect of it. Number three is not coming from a place of scarcity. So if you're a business owner or even if you've got a sales job or something like that, when you're in launch mode or you're trying to get clients and stuff, and a few people have said this to me, it's really hard though because... How do you not come from a place of scarcity when you're in a place of scarcity? <laughs> so I've been experiencing the same loop over and over and I've been learning about energetic minimums and all these different things as well. So if you're trying to get clients or trying to get bookings or whatever it is, coming from a place of you have enough or more than enough right now and this would just be nice to get this rather than absolutely needing it kind of thing and I'm still new to learning about all this energy I just invested in a sound healing session for myself and invested in a cacao ceremony and breathwork session and I'm just learning to like feel physical energy and stuff as well god I'm starting to sound so spiritual and weird um but it can be very hard to break out of that pattern like how do you pretend to be something you're not but see if there's other things you can do in your life. Like, can you make some extra money online doing a different kind of side hustle? Or can you pick up a few extra hours of work doing such and such so you've got enough to keep you 
afloat and keep you going so that when you sell it's coming from this different energy and it's going to get you better results that's probably the best I can put it into words but yeah a bit of a like a hard cycle to break out of but I've just personally set up other things in my life finally I'm doing some other stuff online I live at a retreat so I've been just cleaning the retreat I don't like cleaning but it's a foot in the right door so hopefully in the future I can do workshops or do the catering for them or something so I'm just trying to start at the bottom there but it's yeah it's exhausting it's like five and a half hours straight of like hard physical work changing all the beds doing everything polishing it um but then yeah it's definitely helping kind of thing so just setting up things in other areas of your life so you've got multiple streams of income or a few things on the go at once Number four, prioritize nourishment with food and exercise. So this one is just so simple. Everyone knows they need to be eating healthy, they need to be exercising. But honestly, the last few weeks, I've ramped up my motivation and commitment and consistency. So I'm competing in October, so it's still a few months away. And in my head, because the last bikini show I did, I prepped in six weeks. I barely lost any body fat from what I was before. I placed third in wellness still, which I cried on stage. But I think because it was a six-week prep, I'm like, cool, I've got six weeks to get into shape, find a bikini, do some posing lessons, get there, enter, do all the show fees and everything. So... It was just go, go, go. But this time, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's still a few months away. Oh, I'm a bit tired to go to the gym today. <laughs> just making up excuses. Because I haven't been in a good mental state for the whole year, my whole nutrition is not gone out the window, but it's I just can't be bothered eating or cooking a lot of the time. And that's just, yeah, because of my emotional stuff going on. So obviously when I don't eat enough or I can't be bothered or anything like that, then I get low in nutrients because I'm plant-based. I need to really focus on high intake of whole foods kind of thing and lots of micronutrients. So just being more consistent with it and you will really feel the benefits. So I've just started eating more, eating better quality food, just doing more meal prep, cooking more in bulk, and just having something ready in the fridge when I'm having a busy day instead of just looking in there like, oh, I can't be bothered, I might just have a nap instead. If you can just look in there and there's stuff ready to go, it's just going to help with your whole energy, your focus, your whole drive for life, because food is our whole entire being. What you feed yourself is what you can put out to the world, so it's really, really important. And with exercise... I've just been pushing myself a lot more and for me I really like having a program so I've got a coach who has an app and then she just puts in because I, I do all my own nutrition and stuff but I'm not the fitness expert so I've got this app and you put in your reps and your weights and it tells you when you hit PBs and it's just got it all laid out it's got how-to videos of everything and that really really helps me because I used to just go to the gym willy-nilly and never saw results, never increased the weights for years. <laughs> so I'm actually really, really pushing myself now. I did chest day yesterday and I did it almost to a failure and everything is just popping out. <laughs> so every day lately, when I wake up and look at the mirror, I'm seeing changes pretty much daily and I'm like, whoa, it's getting more ripped, whoa, everything's growing or getting leaner and it's just so cool to see the benefits of putting in the work kind of thing and remember that exercise releases happy endorphins as well and it's good to just move your body so whether it's going to the gym and smashing out a weight session or doing group fitness classes like a hit class or a boxing class or going to yoga I'm finally going to go to some Pilates next week on one of the days which is something I want to do more of and even just going for nice nature walks walking through the trees or along the beach wherever you live just getting out into nature somehow just to Feel the sunlight on your skin, especially since the weather's a bit cooler at the moment. It just, oh, It's just bliss. It's one of my favorite feelings in the world when it's been cold and it's been winter and you just go outside and it just gently warms in your skin and you can just soak up some vitamin D and just feel happy kind of thing. So get in the exercise and don't forget to just work towards a goal and track your progress as well. So whether it's a strength-based goal, whether it's a routine-based goal to go to the gym four days a week or something, or for me it's having the bikini show because it's something quite hard and quite high up to work towards. So it's really just keeping me on track. So just track your progress, celebrate the small wins and work towards something that you want to achieve.
Tip number five is to surround yourself in good people with the same values, same mission, people who are uplifting and people who want you to win. I met someone the other day who I think he's going through a bit of a transition period. He was spending, he realized he didn't want to spend time with friends who wanted to go out and party all the time and go out to the clubs every weekend and not really progress in the career side of things. And I think a lot of people kind of go through that transition when you get to a certain age and everyone's out just partying and getting wasted and you're like, actually, I want to do something a little bit more and spend my weekends in and build a business or work on your career or for some people that might be studying. So find people that match what you want to do. So... I've met quite a few awesome people lately who are similar to me because I want to be a DJ, like I am a DJ, (laughs) but I love partying. I love going to Bushdoffs. I love going to festivals and gigs, but it's not what I do every weekend kind of thing. I love having weekends at home. I love spending a Saturday night DJing to myself in my room and drinking wine. I love waking up and going for a hike in the morning or meeting a friend for a coffee or going to a little workshop or something or just sometimes I just do my business all weekend because it's my favorite thing to do, (laughs) interview people for my podcast. So I've met quite a few people lately who like one of my new friends, she is a Pilates instructor and she's also vegan and she also is into going to bush jobs and going to gigs and stuff. And she's a DJ too. So you really can have that balance, but that's the key. It's got to be balanced and going out for the right reasons. Like I don't go out to get wasted and get effed up. I go out because I want to see that DJ play and I want to listen to that music and Uh, Even when I went to that birthday the other day, I wanted to meet people who had the same interests in me, who like going to Bushdorfs and stuff so that I could just connect because I just moved here. So I wanted to make new friends kind of thing. So just finding balance with all the right things. And honestly, friends that just care about your success. My best friend has been my biggest supporter. She has been so patient with me over the years while I've been going through some bad shit. And... She's always just been in my corner, helping me with whatever I need to help with. She is killing it in life as well. And we both just cheer each other on and we know that there's enough success to go around for everyone. And if people see someone as competition, I think you should change the the vision. Instead of them being competition, it can actually be collaboration. So when people work together... Even with my podcast, I'm interviewing people with the same business model. They're online coaches, they're in the vegan space or in the wellness space. So instead of being like, oh my God, I'm showing all these people they could take my clients, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hey, let's work together. Let's record a podcast episode and teach people all this amazing information and inspire them. And I love just connecting with people. And I know that there's enough to go around for everyone. So it's a more of an abundance mindset to have. But yeah, really just finding people who have the same ball in their cord and want to spend their time in the same way. Even if you struggle to find friends in person, depending on what kind of area you're you're in, you can always make friends online as well. There's a couple of people I talk to in America and we always just send each other a nice message or comment on each other's posts and just cheer them on with whatever they're doing. Um, So there's definitely spaces online where you can find people who are doing the same thing and just stay in touch with them otherwise I haven't done this myself but you can join masterminds as well a lot of the podcasts I've been listening to they have masterminds or they've joined masterminds and it's for people who are kind of yeah working from home or whatever or they've got this bigger vision but no one in their life cares about (laughs) the same thing and they might be viewed as weird and everything by the people who are closer to them. So they join this mastermind and they meet up once a week online and they just uh, share ideas, they gas each other up, they, they're just working towards this big goal together. They share things about their income, about their marketing, about their businesses, and it's just this big growth group, basically. So I haven't done one myself, but there's things like that out there as well, which can be beneficial to people. And also if you're investing in something this is another thing then you value it more so 
if you do things for free, it can definitely help at certain stages of your life. But if you're paying for something, you're bound to put in the work and put in the effort behind it because the stakes are higher. Number six, finding the silver lining. So recently I ran through all the crap. I basically had a two year detour. I moved to Australia because I wanted to come to Brisbane or Gold Coast. And then I moved to a little town where my ex grew up and it was beautiful there. And I had lots of good experiences, but in terms of career, it was quite limited just because of the size of it. No one was really doing the same stuff as me there. It took me 11 months to make friends. Um, it was a beautiful time, but I spent quite a lot, a lot of time being angry about it. Like I've just wasted all this time on a two year detour and I finally moved to Gold Coast and I just felt so angry about what I'd been through, all the stuff with getting a food truck brought for me and then getting it taken off me with seven days notice to come up with 22 grand and different relationship breaks, re breakdowns I had with ex-family-in-law members, with different housemates, with different friends. There was just a lot of drama that happened in that time. Stuff with my ex-partner having to call the police on someone uh, because I didn't feel safe in my own home and I was getting threats and I was just holding on to so much anger and also just struggling during that whole period during the pandemic, struggling to get work, struggling to get ahead, just nothing went to plan. It was hard, really, really hard. So I've been holding on to all this anger and it was quite weird because the property I'm living at now, it is beautiful. It's a, this big house on top of the hill. We're surrounded in forest. It's just my dream. We've got all these cute animals and something really weird happened. I lived on basically the same property before at a point in Yapoon when I lived there. So there was a house on top of the hill. There's a little one at the bottom of the hill. There was forest and greenery all around, similar acreage of land, same animals. We both had a chicken coop. We both had a calf. We both had horses. And it's like the same experience, but now I'm a new person, but the property is like the same. So once it came to that realization, I just thought, actually, I had to go through all that shit to grow as a person and to learn just so that I can handle this now and hold down this property, this situation where I'm at. Because if I came straight here when I was, uh, well, in yeah, 2020, so if I c came straight here, I wouldn't have all that experience to know how to handle conflict in housing or know how to handle things with uh, finding work and things on the property and helping out and things like that. So all that stuff had to go wrong just to grow, like help me grow into this person so that I can hold this down. And even with the food truck, I came to the conclusion a few weeks ago that I would love to do it again. And this time I would save up, I would buy one almost double the price so it doesn't break down all the time. It would have enough size in it. I would have a cabinet so I can sell the food easier because they'd be able to see it. Just fully functional because the other one get breaking down then I'd be out for days and all my food would go off because I sold salads and then it was just a nightmare. I didn't have the right generator because I couldn't afford it so that would short out the coffee machine and I had to pay for the coffee machine to be fixed and it was just one thing after another. So I and then also I cooked every day so I was out there f about six days a week waking up at 3 or 4 a.m. I was doing all the cooking myself all the food ordering all the shopping all the account side of things like working in the actual food truck all the dishes by hand um, and I just broke my body so now I know this time oh I actually now that all that's happened I actually know how to set up a food truck I can just go and do it whenever I'm ready get started. Now I know that I just want to do markets and festivals. I know what kind of food would be the best to sell. I know just everything, how I'll do it differently. So even though I was heartbroken about that for months, 
oh, I was just so sad. At least now I've got the experience to put that into another project in the future whenever I want, basically. So then recently also I basically moved here, struggled to get work for a month or whatever. Then I just got a job and then I broke my toe and then I got fired from the job I just got because of my foot and issues going on at home. And then I got bedridden and sick for two weeks. I couldn't even do anything. I couldn't even keep my eyes open. And I feel like there was just this big emotional toxin release kind of thing because I was quite unwell. And then... Now I'm the happiest ever and since I lost my job I realized what kind of work I actually want to do and how I want to spend my weeks and what suits me because it was going to be about two hours of travel each way so in the moment I needed work so I was like yeah well I'm just going to have to do it that's okay because I really want the job but you can't you can't drive two hours each way (laughs) especially if I've got all this other stuff I'm trying to no no it's not gonna work so all of that stuff did happen for a reason and when I broke my toe and I was resting up and just taking some time out I just had so much clarity around my goals what do I want what I want to achieve for the rest of the year just what I want to do with my life and just I feel so good about everything now that I've had the time out to just stop with all the life busyness and focus on what I want and I've been working on my mental health and my mindset daily like full time and a few people have said like oh what are you doing for work and I've literally said I'm literally just working on my mind at the moment (laughs) which I am so there's that and then getting out of my relationship I never thought that I could be possibly happy living on my own I didn't think I could live day to day on my own I didn't think I could sleep on my own and things have just really taken a positive turn in the last few weeks so I had to go through all the bad stuff to learn how to stand up for myself and learn what is and isn't okay and I think oh that's so true actually because I was running away from this relationship I don't want that I'd seen in in my past I didn't want a relationship with yelling and all the stuff so I got a relationship with yelling and all the same stuff that I was running away from see that's it that's the thing so it's really hard to break the cycle and become aware of it so I know I'm getting like really deep right now but I'm just yeah I'm kind of just treating this whole thing like I'm just being so honest about the exact thoughts I've been having, everything I've been learning, exactly what I've been going through, even though it's really deep and raw and real, because I think that so many people can benefit from this, because it's really, really deep work. Number seven, controlling your subconscious mind. So this one's really hard. So the lady I live with, she's been trying to lose weight, and what she realized is that her energetic minimum is this certain weight like oh I would love to get to this but this is what I usually am so she only gets to what she usually is because then she loses the identity of needing to lose weight or having a weight problem what a mind fuck again (laughs) I've just been learning about what holistic weight loss is because it can be your identity as well because if you then lose the weight and turn into this other person transform your physique that means you no longer have this crisis or this issue or this identity so there's actually it's just so much more than calories in calories out it's your whole way you view yourself and there's just so much more around that if like that reflects you achieving your goals kind of thing when it comes to your weight loss as well So I've been learning heaps about my energetic minimums and what I got told by my coach is you will only get as many clients as you can hold space for. So even when I do group programs, every time I get, every time I do a launch, I've had the same amount of clients for the last few years. It's always the exact same number. How weird is that? And it's because every time I launch, I'm like, oh, I would love to get this number, but this is what I usually get. So that's the minimum. So because I focus on, oh, that's the minimum, that's what I get because I'm attracting that into my life. And then also with like getting clients, you can only get as many as you can hold. So no matter what your marketing is like, no matter how good you are, if your life isn't in order, you can't physically hold the space for that many people. So that's really, really been interesting 
for me to work through. And even one of my last things I did, I did the recipe club and actually did have some technical difficulties and a couple emails went out late and then that's when I got sick and then bedridden and I was so, I was just having all this guilt. Like it was okay, I just postponed one of the weeks and I'm sure no one minded, but I was bedridden, so ill, broke my foot, just lost my job and I'm trying to make recipes but I'm not meant to put pressure on my foot because of all the bruising and swelling. So I was meant to be cooking all these recipes and taking photos of them and writing it all down and putting it into the PDF and I just needed to sleep all day. So I postponed one of the weeks but what got me, what I realized was if I did have this goal of this many clients for that thing, then... I would feel so much more pressure to not maybe meet the expectations or maybe to postpone it by the week because there'd be more people to really make sure that they're happy kind of thing. So it was actually quite good how it turned out with the amount I had because it was, yeah, it was just a good amount for what I was going through at the time because there was so much other stuff kind of thing. So it actually turned out to be really good because that is the amount of people that I could hold at that time. So it's really, really weird how life turns out. Number eight, write down all your goals. Remember that nothing is too big. You need the highest, grandest vision possible for your life. Get out a pen and paper, draw your dream house, put it on a vision board. This is my bed behind me. So I've got my vision board there with all my business idols. I've got food that I want to fuel my body with, different quote reminders about business or even taking rest days and stuff because I do feel a a lot of guilt around that different idols in the uh, WBFF bikini bodybuilding show of what I want to look like and just how I want to show up. Um, A few photos of like dream houses, what I want my dream kitchen and pantry to look like. It's all there and I laminated it just to keep it looking nice kind of thing. And then here I've got my goals for the year, um, different things with what I want to do in my business and in my life. And then the other one is my financial goals for the year because my goal this year is to pay off all my debt. So once I start getting through it, I've basically, because my whole year was filled with drama. So now I've basically got six months to achieve a one year goal and I'm all for it. I'm ready to take it on. I'm feeling so good. I'm not using that as a limiting belief like, oh no, I've lost half the year. I'm like, okay, cool. I've got half a year to do double as good as what I even expected kind of thing. So having those things in plain sight, whether you make something up and put it as your computer wallpaper or the wallpaper on your phone or just put little pictures or quotes around the house or around your room. It's really, really good to be reminded of all that stuff. Number nine is letting go of the age timeline of when you should have everything done and where you should be in life. This is something I struggle with a lot, so I can't really sit here and tell you not to worry about it because I freaking worry about it a lot. I'm like, oh my God, these people I went to school with own houses. Oh my God, these people are married with kids. And then I'm freaking out that I'm like not secure or all these different things, but then people probably look at me and they're like, oh my God, she's doing all this and I have a house and a family, so everyone's always looking at each other. <laughs> and whatever you're doing, just know that you you are exactly where you're meant to be. I think the biggest thing to remember is that our life goal should be to be as happy as possible. So no matter what you're doing for work, if you're not happy, then that's not good. Like You just need to wake up and do whatever it is that is fun and meaningful to you and happy and whatever relationship you're in or housing situation, just wherever you live, the biggest goal is just to have fun in life because we only get to live once. And even my friend, I think it was a couple years ago or something, we were (laughs) talking about going to a gig or something or some kind of festival and I was like oh I don't know if I should be going like I should be saving money but I really want to hear this person and she's like bro you could die tomorrow (laughs) so like we're going kind of thing (laughs) and she always just says that but it's true we don't know how long we've got here and even next weekend I'm going to another bush stuff because I was meant to just be serious and be home and work on my business But going to those events is my favorite part of being alive. So why would I not do that if I've got my head down and working nonstop, huge days during the week, just putting all my time and energy into this? 
you can go away for a weekend and do what you want to do or go away on a day trip or chase that thing that you're after because we really do live once and time really flies especially when you get stuck into the routine wake up go to work come home have dinner watch tv go to bed wake up go to work do the same thing so go after whatever it is that's going to light you up and ignite the fire inside of you and just make you your happiest and best self Number 10, finding peace with your past. This is kind of what I touched on before, but instead of feeling all this anger and hate about what's gone on, think about what you've gained from certain situations. And there was another thing that happened this year. I actually was homeless for a little bit. I just had to stay at random people's houses and I'm very grateful for the people that helped me out. And I had to cut all my stuff with me in my car with my huge dog and finish off the double shifts that I was doing just exhausted it was a really bad time and I a few months ago yeah I I couldn't be bothered trying anymore I couldn't be bothered trying to make my business work I couldn't be bothered trying to live I couldn't be bothered trying with my health trying to make new meet new people I just couldn't be bothered I was so tired from life like the life was sucked out of me I just (laughs) I was just ready to give up honestly and it's probably hard to imagine me in those kind of situations but even at this house so I drove I got got to Gold Coast with just enough gas in the car to get here I had no job and I've mentioned this before like I had nothing set set up but I had to escape this situation that I was in and make this a reality so I just drove here with my car like my car full of gas and that's all I had and I had a house obviously but only enough for about one week's worth of rent So I got here and even after a couple weeks of trying to apply for jobs and hadn't really gotten any work yet, I had to do this big drive and then I pulled up and our driveway is just so steep and windy and I just got to the top of the hill. Like if you stop on this driveway also, you're going to slide down. Like you you have to kind of floor it till you get to the top kind of thing because of all the gravel, it's really slippery. So I just got to the top of the driveway and then my car ran out of gas right blocking the gate and everything like I got in the gate and then it ran out of gas right there so oh that was just a crazy moment that the universe is trying to look out for me like I could have been stranded anywhere sucks that I still ran out of gas but I (laughs) that's all I had I had didn't have any work I didn't have anything to keep me going or to keep me afloat and that was just a reminder that the universe is looking out for you like hey we're gonna get you home but you need to get your shit sorted quickly (laughs) so in that moment I just had this big breakdown because I was like I just don't know if I can do it hey I don't know how long I can hold this up this is quite a big leap it's either this or just choose to fail but I really wanted to make it work and it's working so (laughs) funny story to share like it was really hard times but yeah (laughs) so always think about what you've learned be grateful for the good times even in my relationship it's not like a waste of time that I spent all these years in the relationship blah 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 because I had some of the best times in my life and learned so much and learned to love really hard really deep and just yeah it was the good times were amazing so I like to focus on that and then always just look back on things and think about what lessons or experiences life has given you number 11 almost at the end everything happens for a reason so similar kind of topic again but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel when things don't go your way try to look at it as redirection even if you don't see it at the time even if things are looking like the end of the world you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel you don't even think you can laugh or smile again because things are just so hard remember that it does come to an end and you have to do the work though like whether it's internally practically doing the work to get better in your life but 
it is always redirection and the universe is always looking out for you and always giving you what you need basically so it can be quite hard at the time but even when people get sick and get illnesses and stuff they gain this whole other appreciation for things and they take their whole life on a whole nother turn and everything so even if like it's it's quite hard to bring up but even a few podcasts I've listened to when they talk about someone passing away it gives them this whole new gratitude for things and makes them go after the things they want in their life because you do realize that your time can be up at like at any stage kind of thing and then they go on and live their life through this other person do things that they love to do and they really like take advantage of the horrible situation to try and turn it into something good and yeah like I don't know like there's so many avenues this can go down but whatever is going wrong in your life just remember that it's redirection whether it's a breakup whether it's losing a job whether it's having to move away uh, anything that's going on different things got to do with your health how can you turn it into a positive what can you learn what can you focus on and how can you prioritize yourself and your well-being and your own happiness number 12 i've been saving this one till last one of my goals this year was to create the best nutrition program that I've ever created. The thing that I can be the most proud of and the thing that I'm so excited to tell everyone about. My best work. And I've had, it's taken a lot of brainstorming because I've got such a different approach. So I don't give a meal plan and a workout plan or I don't tell people how many calories to eat. I don't tell them what their macros should be. So how is this really measurable? What am I offering? Because I love the whole intuitive eating, uh, holistic side of things, just zooming out on our health and looking at the wider picture. That's what I'm all about. And eating through the earth and nourishing through plant-based food and all that kind of thing. So I'm like, what is it that I offer if it's not a meal plan? Because I don't go off meal plans. That's not how I feel my body. That's not how I eat. I don't like rules. I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> so how can I turn this into something? So it's going to be an eight-week program. And I was up at midnight the other night thinking of names. I still haven't thought of a name. By the time this video goes live I probably would have a name honestly but I was up at midnight just so happy and amped for life like what do I call it putting putting down all these bullet points and just thinking of the one kind of thing but I'm still working on that but I created the landing page so people can sign up for a pre-enrollment basically so you can go on the wait list and you can just be the first to be notified when it goes live you'll get a special launch discount as well so the three pillars that I'm going to cover, number one is digestion and bloating because this is the whole reason I became a nutritionist. So I cured my whole health issues through food and I used to go to hospital because it felt like my organs were going to pop out of my stomach because I was so bloated. I would only go toilet every four to five days sometimes, like twice a week. And I just had so many digestive problems then when I would go to the bathroom everything would come at once like I was just in so much discomfort after eating a meal really embarrassed if you're trying to socialize or go out for dinner and your stomach looks pregnant and you're actually in pain and oh my it's just like a balloon inside of you so I cured all my health issues through food and I would go to hospital and go to the doctors and no one ever asked do you have any food intolerances what's your diet and lifestyle like? They just say, oh, there's no issue or have some painkillers or something. That's not fixing the source of the problem. So then I went plant-based, fixed everything, learned that you can cure all these other health issues through plant-based nutrition. And I was like, I need to tell the world about this. So I quit my job in a corporate hotel um, after studying my degree for that and I studied nutrition and then I started my own business and I've been out on my own ever since then making this happen so I'm really passionate about the digestion and bloating side of it and so many people are just walking around with pain and discomfort daily and they don't know how good they can actually feel they just think it's a normal part of life now so I want to help people 
figure out their triggering foods, figure out how to find a nice balance where they can feel comfortable within themselves every day, just feel absolutely amazing. So digestion and bloating is pillar one. Pillar two is holistic weight loss. So what I mentioned before is zooming out and looking at the big picture around everything. All these PTs post online, oh, it's all about calories in, calories out. It's that simple. Well, no, it's not because... If someone is overly stressed out or maybe they barely eat healthy fats because it's high cal and then their hormones are out, then they're going to still hold on to the weight because their hormones aren't in check. Or even, yeah, their adrenals, their thyroid, all the different things that can all affect your weight. Even simple things like stress and sleep. If you're not sleeping well because of maybe an emotional issue, then you're going to be craving all the sugary, salty, fatty, oily foods for an energy hit because you're struggling to get through the day. So it's not like, okay, cut out those foods because they physically can't because they're so tired. So how about we work on that emotional stuff first to fix the issue, find some herbal supplements to help with the sleep, then the cravings are going to stop, boom, you solve the issue. Like there's just so much more <laughs> to weight loss than people even realize. And same thing as I mentioned before about the identity thing. If they've only ever identified as a larger person, then to lose weight, they no longer have that issue or identity. They're then a different person to what their subconscious mind knows. So they'll subconsciously sabotage themselves by maybe doing binge eating or doing things like that because they can't help it because of their subconscious mind. So there's so much to look into when it comes to holistic weight loss. And it should always be done in a fit in a fun and sustainable way. The third pillar is exercise performance. So as you know, I'm training for my second bodybuilding show and I have seen the gains. I've put on a lot of muscle and honestly an intuitive off season because I don't track anything. And people always say like, I thought when I went plant-based that I would fade away and I'd be pale and weak and yeah, just wouldn't be able to survive. And I'm most... I'm more jacked than most guys at the gym. And when I'm working out, that's how I stay motivated because, motivated because I look at a guy and I'm like, yeah, I've got bigger muscles than him. And I just keep pumping it up. Or I try to lift heavier than them or just be more ripped than them. And it's just this big ass joke to me. And I'm just actually feeling like quite strong at the moment and really, really feeling myself. So It is so possible to lose fat on a plant-based diet, even though it's higher carb. And it is so possible to build muscle by eating plants. So I want to show people how to do that, whether they've got actual performance goals like powerlifting or if they're athletes or whatever on a plant-based or vegan diet or bodybuilding. Like I don't do calorie-restricted meal plans at this stage or anything, but really teach you the fundamentals behind the nutrition and how to build your plate, how to tune in with what you're really feeling, what feels good, what do you need, why are you having certain cravings, asking yourself questions. So the exercise performance pillar is for those wanting to optimize their workouts and muscle growth without the need for animal products. So that's that. So this is what I'm going to be working on for the second part of the year. It's probably going to take a few months to put together. So if that sounds like you, then I'll link the sign up page so you can go on the wait list and just be part of my email newsletter and be the first to know about when it launches. As I said, you'll get a special discount price for when it first goes live for being on the wait list. It can be intimidating knowing where to start or what to swap out and where to get your nutrients from and how to fuel your body correctly. Don't forget that food is meant to be enjoyed and when you feel like you can f- eat in abundance, things naturally fall into place and you just start to feel good because you're in tune with your body and what you need. So that's that. So I just looked at the time and it's actually a really long episode I did all by myself, but I've been going through so much, especially through the breathwork sessions, cacao ceremony, sound healing. I've just been diving into all the stuff. So I just really hope that you got some valuable information out of it and hope that you can use kind of my negative situations and how I've turned things around to apply to your own life and yeah I hope that you loved it don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for next week for another awesome episode don't forget to do things that make you happy and just shine bright every day 
So thank you so much for listening and tuning in. I'll see you next week. Love you lots. Thank you.